much children i hope all of you ready for today's video class in today's video class i am going to teach you an important concept of grammar that's verbs you know that verbs plays an important role whatever you speak whatever you write whatever you think without verb you cannot do all these things verb plays an important role in grammar in everyone's language what's verb a layman definition even if you ask anyone what's verb immediately they will say verb is an action word no doubt verb is an action word it says something about a person or thing it says it explains it tells the action performed by the subject that's a doer at the action so verb is an action word other than that verbs also does other functions as a parts of speech today i am going to teach you all such things so verb listen to me very carefully children verb is a word that says what a person what a thing is verb is a word that says what a person or thing has verb is a word that says what a person or thing does so a verb shows not only action it also shows the position of a person or thing it also shows the possession of a thing what a thing has what a person has so all these things together called verb so verb is a word in a sentence it says something about a person or a thing okay children could you follow me now i will show you some hand drawn pictures which helps you to understand this concept well look here first function of a verb a verb is a word that says what a person or thing is now look this picture observe observe this picture children see this is a picture in the picture an astronaut is traveling in a space craft in the space suppose what's he he is an astronaut where is he he is in the space craft where is the space craft the space craft is in the space see he is a astronomer he is in the space craft the space craft is in the space what are these they are all clouds they are all clouds what are these they are stars so in all these sentences you can find he is an astronaut is is a verb he is in the space craft again is is a verb the space craft is in the sky is a verb and they are all clouds are all verbs they are stars so in this through this picture you can understand clearly one of the important function of verb verb says what a person or thing is the position okay so it is one of the important function of a verb look at this picture again children have observe this picture nicely he an astronaut he is in the space craft the space craft is in the sky they are clouds the clouds are also in the sky they are stars they are shining in the sky so this is one of the important function of a verb so this function says that it verbs is a word that says or the verb is a word that shows what a person or thing is okay children second picture the second picture shows the second important function of a verb what a person or thing has that's the important function of a, another important function of a verb here is a picture i'll show you that picture through that picture you can understand the second function of a verb now look at this picture see this is a hand of a man the hand has five fingers the hand has five fingers this is a picture of a bird the bird has two wings hand has five fingers bird has two wings so what does a hand has it has fingers what does a bird have it has wings so this is the second important function of a verb your verb 
says what a person or thing has. Now look at these pictures. See here you can find two tables. Tables have legs. Tables have legs. Here you can find pens, three pens. These pens have nibs. These pens have caps. So this picture clearly shows you the second important function of a verb. What's the second important function of a verb? A verb, see, a verb is a word that says what a person or thing has. So, in the picture, a man's hand, a hand has five fingers, a bird has two wings, tables have legs and pens have caps. Okay, children? So, this is the second important function of a verb. What's the third important function? Verb is a word that says what a person or thing does. The function of a subject. The fun what does the subject see the function of a subject what does it do it's clearly explained by a verb now look at this picture see a girl a girl skips a girl is doing skipping what does he do he is reading he reads a book what the man or the boy does he eats so in the first picture, a girl skips. It is work done. Second, in the picture, a boy reads the work done by him and the work performed by him. The third, he eats. So, the third important function is what a person or thing does. See now this picture. A girl, she swims. What does she do? She swims. And then what a boy does here, he sleeps on the bed. He sleeps on the bed. So, this picture gives you a clear idea about the third important function of a verb. A girl skips, a boy reads, a boy eats, a girl swims, a boy sleeps on the bed. Okay, children. So, with the help of all these picture charts, you can understand clearly what are verbs, what are the functions of verb? A verb is a word that says what a person thing is, what a person thing has, what a person or thing does. Now see I have given you some examples for verbs. See all these, go through all these examples clearly. Eat, run, swim, jump, sing, laugh, cry and speak. So a few examples only I have given. You can collect a lot of pictures and you can describe that pictures with the help of the verbs. Okay children. So verb is an action, not only an action word. It also shows the position and possession of a thing. Now for your better understanding, I will write some sentences which you have seen in the pictures. Okay children. Listen to me very carefully. What you have seen in the picture. Okay, see, in the picture, the first picture, I will write sentences, what you have seen in the picture, listen to me, see, he is an astronaut, he is in the Space cat. They are clouds. They are stars. They are stars. Okay, children. So, this is the first important function of a verb. So, it shows the position. He is an astronaut. Where is he? Who is he? He is an astronaut. See, yes is a verb. So, here it acts as a main verb. 
he does not do any action does not show any action but it shows the position of the subject where is he what's he okay fine he is where is he he is in the spacecraft okay what are those they are clouds they are clouds and what are the see another things which you can see the shining object the twinkling object that stars so this picture shows the position he is an astronaut he is in the spacecraft they are clouds they are in the space they are stars the spacecraft is also in the sky okay nice in this way you can frame many number of sentences what's your father my father is a teacher my father is a teacher who is your mother what's your mother my mother is a domestic engineer my mother is an housewife you can say like that how old are you i am 15 years old i am 16 years old so is and are so they are these they are all called the verbs they expresses or they tells us the position or position of a person or the position or the status of a person or a thing they are the branches of the trees see they are branches of a tree see r is a verb it shows the position they are birds the birds are on the branches of a tree you can give number of sentences like this to understand one of the important function of verb okay children nice now i will give you some more sentences to explain the second important function of a verb what's the second important function of a verb can you enlist yeah the second important function of a verb is it tells what a person or what a thing has possession first position second possession yeah yeah hand has five fingers see has it's a verb and then what are the other pictures which you have seen yeah bird yeah bird has two wings what are the other pictures which you have seen tables have legs see this wall clock it has two hands one short hand one long hand we have two hands we have two legs we have two eyes we have one nose so has have and had they are all verbs they tell as what a person or a thing has they tell us what a person has what a thing has a tree has many branches a bird has two wings this wall clock has two leg two hands we have two hands we have two legs could you follow me children so this is the important second important function of a verb okay what's the third important function that's it shows it tells us what a person or thing does or performs that's an action what a person does what a thing does what i have seen in the picture just to recall action words yeah the first person what he see so second important with the help of second important function i have given you sentences the hand has five fingers the bird has two wings tables have legs pens have caps so you can frame sentences like that and then third important function action words see these pictures just to recall a girl skips a boy reads a boy eats a girl swims and a boy sleeps okay see yeah 
girl swims action word they are action verbs they are therefore they are called action words yeah boy reads action words then yeah boy eats is an action word yeah boy sleeps a yeah, girl okay so they are all action words you read in the classroom a teacher teaches so all these action words shows or tells us what a person or what a thing does so they are called a action words okay so this is the third important function of a verb so now let let's sum up let me sum up all the function of a verb a verb does three important function one it shows the position of a thing or person second important function it shows the possession what a person or thing has third important function of a verb is it shows an action done by the subject or done to the subject that's important okay children so the third important function is clearly explained through the chart see now see these pictures a girl skips a boy reads a boy eats here a girl swims and a boy sleeps on the bed okay children so now you you have learned the basic and important function of a verb what are the other things which you are going to see about the verbs yeah so many things are there which you have to learn about the verbs i will explain you one by one second verbs are generally classified into two types action verbs and the non action verb yeah see we can generally divide the verbs into verbs action verbs or action words and non action verbs okay children so all those verbs which shows the action done by the subject or the action done to the subject or called the action verbs or action words simply we can call so eat jump read they are the best example for action words they show that they tell as the action done by the subject okay there there are another group of verbs they are called non action words they just they doesn't they don't show any action then non action words or non action verbs do not refer to an action as such but they represent a state of being that's important they does not show any action they don't show any action they are called non action verbs they don't show any action but simply they refer to or they represent a state of being a state of being they simply shows or represent a state of being need opinion sense or preference see they show the need they show the opinion they also shows the sense and preference so non action verbs we have another group of verbs they are called non action verbs these group of verbs don't show any action simply they show a state of being they express the need they expresses the opinion they expresses the sense they expresses the preference okay i'll give you the list of non action verbs so you can easily then understand
See? Non action verbs like it's a state. I'm in a state of liking something. Love. I, I love nature. And then want. Need. Believe. Remember. Then see. Oh. Taste. And hear. So you can give very good examples for non action verbs. See, your mother likes her children. See, using this uh, non action verb like, I'm going to give you a good sentence. Your mother likes her children. It shows her state of being. She is in the state of liking her children. That's all. It does not show any action. Similarly, love. We love nature. We love our country. And I want a cup of tea. I want a good dictionary to refer. Or I want a good dictionary for reference. And we need fresh air. Believe. Everyone must believe. Everyone believe supernatural powers. Everyone believe the existence of God. And remember, I remember my childhood days. So in all these examples, I given you good sentences by using all these words. They are called non-action verbs. They don't show any action. They just express us state of being, opinion, need, sense and a preference. Okay children? Very good. Next day. Linking verbs. Another group of verbs we have in English. Such verbs are called linking verbs. So a living verb is a verb which connects a subject to its predicate without expressing an action. That's called linking verbs. Linking verbs. What are linking verbs? Linking verbs are special verbs. They linking you see they connect these linking verbs connect a yes, subject. They connect a yeah, subject to its predicate without showing any action. They are called the linking verbs. It just link, it connects a subject with its predicate. They are called all forms of B verbs. They are called linking verbs. All B form of the verbs are called linking verbs. Do you know children? What are B verbs? Yeah, I will explain. B verbs is am, are, was, and when they are B verbs they just expresses the position of a person what's your father where are you now what is it where are they so you can get an answer for all these questions with the help of these B verbs they are called the linking verbs because they just link or connect a subject with a predicate for example we are Students. See, or the linking verb, it connects a subject with the predicate part. Okay. I am a teacher. We are students. We are Indians. He was in Chennai last year. See, he was in Chennai. Last year. In this example, was is a linking verb. He just connect the subject he with the remaining part of a subject uh, predicate. So that's it called the linking verbs. 
be form of the verbs and then being another part is there i will explain children listen to me very carefully c b is and r present form they refer to the position of a person or thing at present time okay right then was and bad they refer to the position or state of a person in, in the past okay right next being they are called a present participle present participle b plus ing form that's called a present participle okay then b another part this is called a past participle past participle so b form of the verbs base form b1 being present participle and b in past participle they are called linking verbs because they just connect the subject with the predicate okay then we have another forms also has been they are linking verbs have been they are linking verbs had been they are linking verbs okay so has been have been and had been so be form being present participle been and past participle has been have been and had been see this be form can be used to refer to future time also then how can you express such things see so this be form of the verbs can be used to refer to future time then you can use like this see shall be will be shall be and will be and can be okay then past form should be then would be then could be so the these be form of the verbs with uh, models shall will and can can be used to refer to future time okay right then been how can we use been shall have been okay will have been you can use like this should have been would have been so they are all called linking verbs these verbs are used to, to refer these verbs are used to, to connect the subject with a predicate without showing any action therefore they are called linking verbs other than these be form other than these present participle and past participle we have some special verbs they are also called linking verbs they don't show any action see let me explain those special verbs also i will enlist all such verbs which are used as linking verbs okay children see feel remain appear become seem smell look and then taste so these verbs are also called the linking verbs because these verbs used these verbs are used as a complement of a verb complement of a subject you know that i will explain later what are complements how it can be identified in a sentence what are all the kinds of complements we will go for one by one 
Okay, children, see. He appears suddenly. He looks dull. He seems tired. In all these sentences, the verb appears, looks, seems, does not show any action. It shows the position or the status. Okay, so they are called linking words. They just connect the subject with the predicate. It just connects the subject with the predicate. It connects the subject with the predicate. Okay, so they are all called linking verbs. Next, children, I am going to explain forms of verbs. Forms of verbs. These things. See what are the forms of verbs? Main verb have the following forms. Main verbs have the following forms. Main verb. Main verbs have the following forms. What are those forms? Base form. Base form. This is called V1. Example, eat, drink. So this is the base form of the verb. Okay. They stand for personal action. They refer to present time. They stand for personal action. They refer to present time. And then past form. Second past form, this is called V2. They stand for past actions. They refer to past time. These verbs, they are called base form. They stand for present time. They stand for present time. They refer to present tense. They stand for eat, eat, drink, drank. So they stand for past time. They refer to past tense. And then third form, ED form, V3. This is called the past participle. Generally, they are called the past participle. <coughs> sometimes they take ED, sometimes they take EN, sometimes they take NE also in the third form. For example, eat, 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 and drink, drank, drunk. So they are called the ED form or past participle forms. So they take EN, go, went, gone, drink, drank, drunk, draw, drew, drawn. Okay. So they are called V3 form, past participle. One more form we have that's called ING form. They are called present participle. Present participle. They are called ING form. For example, eat plus ing, eating. Drink plus ing, drinking. So they are called a present participle. So they are called a forms of verbs. Main verbs have the following. Forms is nothing but a, the structure. They changes in its form to show the time of action. That's called a tenses. Without such things, we cannot show the Time of action. So base form V1, they always shows the present time. They stand for the present action. Past form V2, they always stand for the past action. They always shows the past tense. ED form V3. So it how it gets this? How can we get this ED form by taking the suffix EN, ED, or NE to the base form? We can get this one. That's called a ED form. This is called a past participle and verb plus ing that is called a present participle. Could you follow me children? Okay, good. Next, let me explain verb, uh, other structures. Affirmative, negative, questions and negative questions. Before that, let me explain. See the verbal structure. 
verbal structure. I will explain this verbal structure. Verbs. Grammarians divide or classify the verbs into two types main verbs and auxiliary verbs. Grammarians classify verbs into two types main verbs and auxiliary verbs. Main verbs are further classified into Transitive and intransitive. Transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. Intransitive verbs. They are further classified into strong verbs and weak verbs. They are further classified into strong verbs and weak verbs. So, verbs are classified into two types, main verbs and auxiliary verbs. Main verbs are further classified into transitive verbs and intransitive verbs. And then they are further classified into strong verbs and weak verbs. Okay, strong verbs and weak verbs. Then what about the auxiliary verbs? These auxiliaries are further classified into two types. Primary auxiliary. and secondary auxiliary primary auxiliary and secondary auxiliary okay children so primary auxiliaries what are those primary auxiliary verbs they are be verbs then do verbs then have verbs all these verbs together called primary auxiliaries. Be verbs is, am, are, then was and were. They are called be verbs. Do verbs do, does and did. Have verbs have, has and had. So they all together called primary auxiliaries or anomalous finite verbs. Okay. So primary auxiliaries be verbs, do verbs and have verbs. Then the secondary auxiliary, we have another classification of verbs. They are called models. They are called models or model auxiliaries. Do you know what are model auxiliaries? Here I will write children, models. Shall will may can they are called model auxiliaries past form of shall should past form of will would past form of may might past form of can could and then must they are called models secondary auxiliaries why we call them as primary auxiliaries because they can be used as a main verb as well as an auxiliary verb but the secondary auxiliaries that is model verbs can be used as an auxiliary verbs alone in a sentence. They cannot be used as a main verbs. So they are the structure of verbs. So verbs can be classified into two types, main verbs and auxiliary verbs. Main verbs are further classified into transitive and intransitive. These things will be, will be explained in detail in the second part of this video class. Before that you have to learn the, some basic structures. That's the things that I have given you all these things. Strong verbs and weak verbs. Primary auxiliaries. Auxiliary verbs are further classified into primary auxiliaries and secondary auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries are be verbs, do verbs and have verbs. Be verbs is, am, or was, were. Do verbs, do, does, did. Have verbs, have, has, and had. Model auxiliaries. They are called secondary auxiliaries. They are also called model verbs. They are shall, will, may, can, and must. Its past form can also be used. Shall, should, will, would, may, might, can, put, and must. So all these verbs together called anomalous finite verbs. 
but the term nowadays is not at all recommended by the grammarians so better you can learn that they are all called the auxiliaries okay then another classification also we have that also i will explain classifications of verbs verbs are further classified into two types kinds are classification of verbs that's they are called a finite verbs and a non finite verbs finite verbs and non finite verbs what are finite verbs verbs which changes according to the number and person they are called finite verbs and non finite verbs are three in numbers they are called infinitive participle and then gerund so these verbs are called non finite verbs they are not restricted by the person or number of the subject but these finite verbs are restricted by the number and person of the subject they changes according to the person they changes according to the subject number so they are called finite verbs for example i'll here i will give you an example he swims they swim so the base form takes yes or es when the subject is singular he swims and they swim so these verbs changes in its form when subject changes if the subject is first person second person and third person persons and then according to the numbers also he and i rama and raja are friends rama and raja watch movie he watches a movie like that so when the when these verbs changes according to the person and the number they are called finite verbs but non finite verbs will never be restricted by the subject there are three types infinite participle and gerund infinite base form is preceded by two that's called infinite to eat so the v1 that is the base form of the verb is preceded by two that's called infinitive and then participle verb plus ing verb plus ed verb plus en two types of participle you know that present participle and past participle present participle take ing past participle take ed or en then gerund verb plus ing this is also called this verb plus ing this is also called verbal adjective because it does the function of an adjective therefore it is called verbal adjective this participle verb plus ing is called verbal noun it does the function of a noun therefore it's called verbal noun but the gerund verb plus ing this is called verbal adjective because it does the function of an adjective so this is another classification finite verbs and non finite verbs okay children so i would like to give you an example i he likes to eat he likes to eat they like to eat bananas they like to eat ice cream he likes to eat ice cream whatever may be the subject may be singular or plural may be first person may be second person but this to eat will remain constant it never changes in its form so non finite verbs are not restricted by the subject see participle i saw him swimming in the river we saw him swimming in the river they saw him swimming in the river whatever may be the subject the verb plus ing that's present participle will never get changed in its form so non finite verbs will never be restricted by the number and person of the subject then gerund v plus ing swimming is the best exercise example 
for gerent swimming is the best exercise so this swimming verb plus ing is gerent because it is used as a noun it's called a verbal noun it here it is used as a subject there it is called a verbal adjective i saw him swimming in the river okay so these classification finite and non finite verbs then strong and weak verbs just i will explain strong and weak verbs main verbs are further classified into strong and weak verbs main verbs strong verbs and weak verbs strong verbs they get its past form by changing the inside vowel such verbs are called strong verbs they get its past form by changing inside vowel they are called strong verbs for example come what's the past form came then fly fly flew go went and then forget forgot and forgotten these verbs are called strong verbs because they gets its past form by changing inside vowels they are called strong verbs and then another classification of verbs we have in english that's called weak verbs these verbs have its past form by taking d ed sometimes t also for example connect past form connected so then take ed judge judged d honor honored and then build c build built built okay so these verbs are called weak verbs they get its past form by taking ed or t at the end d t r e d therefore they are called weak verbs okay children and one more thing i would like to explain see affirmative negative question forms you should know so verbs are classified into main verbs and auxiliary verbs main verbs shows the action auxiliary verbs helps us to frame questions to frame tenses and to frame negatives and to frame i will explain see the important concept children you should know you should be very familiar with these things main verbs and auxiliaries so these main verbs shows the action done by the subject or done to the subject auxiliaries help us in many ways it helps us to show tenses without auxiliaries you cannot show the tense form of the verbs for example eat with the help of main verbs you can show only two tenses present and past for the remaining tenses you have to depend upon these auxiliaries without auxiliaries you cannot show the tense form of the verb so tenses then to frame negatives negative sentences you cannot frame without the help of auxiliaries and then to frame questions for that also you need auxiliaries so tenses i eat i am eating i have eaten okay i will eat then to frame negatives i do not eat he does not eat he will not eat he won't eat to frame questions do you like it did he like it will you like it are you going to attend this exam like that so we need auxiliaries for all these things tenses 
negatives and questions thank you children so they are all the types of verbs once again i would like to show you the charts see the all the pictures in the charts shows the position of a verb so a verb shows the position or the state of a person or thing and then the second chart shows what a person or thing has that's also important function of a verb so here in this picture <coughs> a person or things what they have shown by the verb so it shows the position as well as the possession of a person or thing and then is the important function of a verb it shows the action done by the subject or action done to the subject with these i would like to conclude my sessions verbs are classified into two types main verb and auxiliary verbs main verb shows the action auxiliaries are further classified into primary auxiliaries and secondary auxiliaries primary auxiliaries are called be verbs have verbs and do verbs and the secondary auxiliaries are models and semi models action verb shows action but auxiliaries helps us to frame tenses to show the negatives and to frame questions main verbs are further classified into finite and non finite verbs <coughs> main verbs are further classified into transitive and intransitive verbs that will be dealt in detail in the next class children thank you children i hope all of you have understood it well see you and just to collect more pictures then paste it and frame an album i will explain the remaining things in the next video class thank you children bye have a nice day